I did not create the jinns and the human beings except to worship me. Please subscribe, like, comment and share. Life Stories Hello, Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. My noble brothers and sisters, peace and blessings of Allah be upon you all wherever you are. How are you doing? How is everything where you are? Yes, this is your girl, your sister, Ashuram Tale on Golden Ash TV. Welcome back again. Thank you for being here. Thank you for the love and support. Thank you for always being here unconditionally. May Allah put barak in everything. And please, if you are new here, please don't hesitate to subscribe. In fact, I'm emphasizing on that. Let me take some few seconds for the new family to subscribe one two three yes you have subscribed right thank you so much may allah keep blessing you and loving you in a special way my dear ones yes with the golden ash tv here to inspire motivate and Make you fall so in love with yourself and the dean as well. May Allah enable us to keep on the right and track. I'll be bringing you programs like Relationship Vibe, Dean Time with Ashura Strictly Dean, and then, uh, you know, social matters, addressing issues that are affecting us socially. And then we have the tours and travel. Yes, the travel, the golden Muslima on the go. I'll be traveling with you in all my tours may Allah accept you Rabbi. and then we have the life stories these are my life true life stories and I'm basically telling these stories to inspire people out there because my stories are so inspiring I believe and they're so touching to those that are wanting to learn and to get inspired and motivated. May Allah accept you, Rabbi. What do I have today? Yes, we are going straight to the life stories. Remember, I'm a Muslim revert. Not just a Muslim revert, but proudly a Muslim revert. May Allah accept and keep me on the right track always. And may he keep using me because this is what I want to do. Subhanallah. Mm, yes, this is what I want to do. This is my urge. This is my passion. May Allah accept. My noble ones, yes, I am going to tell it all. To tell it all. So for those who want to know that bits, the here's and about and how's and when's and why's and how's and what's about me, please get glued onto my channel. Here I am, Ashuram Tale, your sister. So that's Abdul. Let's get to today's life story and i just felt like perhaps why not begin from zero those days that i just got to know about me being a human on earth and trailing on how i became a muslim how life was like before islam and then after saying the shahada and then struggling to adapt to the islamic culture and norms may allah accept and get me there so today we're looking at me as a kid and how i got to know oh i'm a human being okay for starters i never grew up with my parents my mom gave birth to me alone with my dad at my dad's that's what i should say hope i've termed it in the right way and then they separated when i was a baby so me getting to understand that i'm a human living on earth i was in the hands of my grandmother my beloved late grandmother she loved me so much we had a bond because she literally raised me like grazed me that's what i should say so my mother got married again alhamdulillah but she kept checking on us and yes i know she was my mother because she kept coming and checking on us but my dad i never knew who he was and how he looked like all i know was he was a muslim so I got to know about my dad at the age of 12. And yeah, that's it. But one scenario I can remember when I was just little, just a kid. Yes. My grandmother was was a young grandmother. I mean, she 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 left the marriage stuff in men because I never saw my grandmother with no man. Mm-mm. 
and she began living alone in her one room. Yes, my grandmother was living in a one. I'm going to tell it all. And this is aiming at inspiring people out there. It's my time to tell my story. May Allah put Barak and Allah sees my intentions in what I'm aiming at. In a one-roomed house, I should call it a house, we were actually renting. By the time I got to know I was a human living on earth. That was my, my, that was my grandmother. And she used to sell clothes. She loved me so much that I remember I used to sleep with her in the same bed. In the same bed till I was like, till, till, till I was gotten from her home and taken by another, uh, you know, relative, by another, my auntie. So before getting there, I remember a scenario. I think I was, I don't remember, like, I think I was in top class. One thing I remember about myself was that I was so, I was so clever and so, sharp and I was so outspoken I was actually considered to be one of the cleverest kids at school because I remember one time the teachers got me skipping from I think middle class they thought uh, they just took me from baby they just took me to they just took me to top class there is this class that teachers made me skip i remember something because they thought i was above that and i remember like i was I, I used to be given poems and you know that loud kid that has a sharp voice that can speak boldly at uh is it was it speak days I remember we used to have those days that parents could come and we rhyme poems and we could sing for them. I was that kind and every teacher liked me. They wanted me in their groups and all that, you know. So I'm trying to get into the details of me, you know, being a kid. I told you, let's begin this from, from zero. So I remember by then, I think I was in top class, you know, beginning of uh, primary one, P1 class. And I heard about my dad being a Muslim. And I remember one time in Ramadan, I supposedly think that was Ramadan because I fasted. But, you know, fasting of kids, I, I was, and I told my grandma I was going to be Kasifa, 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 that is Hasfa. And I was like, you know what, I, I'm going to be that. And I was just excited about Islam as little as little as I was. I was so excited about Islam. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to be Kasva. And I began fasting because I remember I missed, I used to miss out lunch in that and picture of me fasting. But I used to eat some little mangoes, but then eat my lunch. But it wasn't, you know, it just, just like a kid, you know, I was just imitating and I was excited about me being a Muslim. And then... We used to go to church because my late grandmother used to be a Catholic. So we used to go to church. And that was the kind of life I remember when I was just a kid, a little kid. I think I was around five, six years. And then at the end of my auntie picked me up in the second term of primary one, that is P1. So she took me. By then I was in the village, village of Buyukwe. There is Buyukwe. Yes, the village of Buyukwe. So she brought me to Kampala. That was in Chengera. She was staying in Chengera with her, you know, she was married with children. So I started from there at, you know, from, I finished primary one, primary two, primary three, primary four. And then primary five, I grew up in different hands, alhamdulillah. So primary uh, five, Another relative from my dad's side got me. So now we are, we're just done with me staying with my grandmother and all that. And then now I'm beginning another phase staying with my auntie. And I remember we used to watch LTV, Lighthouse TV, for those who remember those days. That was a Christian TV, Born Again TV. There used to be cartoons and there used to be a kids programs. I really love those kids programs a lot. As bold as I was a kid, I was so full of life. Just so, you know, a happy kid. I was really a happy kid. I remember so outspoken. I was so bold. I would 
I was so talkative because at one time I remember my one of my aunties nicknamed me Kalailai. Kalailai meant, you know, that 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 the bold key that you, you I was so talkative, I could speak, uh, you know, I was so loud. Yeah, I was naughty as well. I was naughty. So I could watch cartoons i love just like any kid i loved cartoons a lot and every time i watched the cartoons and that those kids uh programs i could lock myself up and just imitate them and speak the way they spoke and i just loved everything about them and you know i just loved presenting from day one when i was a kid because every time i remember like every time i used to watch those kids and how they talked and everything about them and how they did whatever they did i could imitate them alone somewhere locked up maybe in a room or somewhere i remember all those times so alhamdulillah we were kids i grew up with my auntie's kids and life was just alhamdulillah you know kids mashallah so happy so full of life um so Another relative of mine from my dad's side picked me from there. So she took me and I started primary five, six, and seven from her. Now, mind you, by this time I was 10 years old because I remember 10 years I was in primary five, 11 years I was in primary six, and at 12 years I was in primary seven. But I was that clever girl that I remember I teachers used to teach and then after teaching they used to 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 refer the other kids to me to explain to them or they used to call me and I stood in class and I could explain what the teacher has taught and I pupil language to make other or to help out others understand or they would refer them for those who have not understood go to her my name was Mebo Mebo the before the Islam so I was known for that and I used to be famous at school, I think for the boldness that I had and for the outspoken, the, the loudness that I had, I would just speak to someone right looking into their eyes. You know, I was that person. Those were my traits, alhamdulillah. Then remember now I am growing up and my brains are understanding just everything. So when I came to this other auntie, mark you at my mom's side, per se, I'm the only Muslim. So even the people that took me at my dad's side were not Muslims, they were Christians. Ooh. So from my grandmother to my first auntie that picked me up from my grandmother, that was Catholic. Then my other auntie that picked me up from my dad's side, that was born again Christianity. Now I was big enough to differentiate and to know what I was doing. I fell so much in love with the born again subhanallah it was it was everything to me i felt in it i felt so enveloped in it in such a way that as young as i was i used to fast i used to go to the crusades yes i used to go there from school because i was a day scholar so from school i used to just come straight to the that is if there were any crusades i used to be there. i used to enjoy the singing and all that you know i used to fast alhamdulillah so there is a scenario that i remember one day i was standing on the balcony i was like i looked up in the sky and raised my hands and i was like god i want to serve you please use me i was so young but i was so intact with the dean i loved the dean so much i was so into it and i was like please use me use me i just want to serve you i just want to be close to you that was the prayer that i prayed but i was just young you know but i just felt me so enveloped in the din alhamdulillah then yeah that whilst i was at that auntie of mine my dad came that's when i knew how he looked that was i think i was 12 years old and that's when i had a picture of my dad and how he looked like and Every time I heard that he, because he also just reverted to Islam, he wasn't born into Islam. And every time I heard that he just reverted to Islam, I was just like, anytime that I'll come across him and sit him down, I want to bring him back to the right, to the right religion. And um, subhanAllah, and I was like, you know what? I will bring him back. So I was so devoted too. So I, when I saw him, I introduced the, the topic to him, but it wasn't lengthy. Like there wasn't that much time to talk about that. 
So, Alhamdulillah, when I finished my primary seven, he picked me and took me to his home. So that was my um, stepmom, and she was cool, Alhamdulillah. Then, right away, he brought the topic, because remember, the last time I saw him, it was it used to be all about the topic and all that, you know. So he brought the topic again. He said, oh, I was told you want to bring me back to Christianity. How about that? Can we talk about it? I was just like, hey, let's go, let's go. I was so fired up and I was just like, you know what? Jesus was crucified. He was crucified for our sins. And I had all those verses and all, you know, those phases and all that. And it was like, you know what? Bring the Bible. Mm -hmm. brought the bible because had it been the quran trust me i wouldn't even have looked into it because you know what those are your words do you, you've got nothing to tell me about anything so it was the bible and then the old testament is islam remember the old testament is the untouched version of the bible the New Testament, the, 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 the Matthews, the Pauls, the Johns sat on a round table and, you know, changed the rules and everything in their favor. We all know that story. So, the Old Testament is the real version. God's words, and they are Islam. There's so many contradictions in the Bible, different verses, same verses saying different things. Some verses were erased out of the Bible. So all these things, you know, I was just like, what? He gave me verses like um, a, a believer removing their shoes whilst entering the house of God, washing themselves, cleaning themselves before entering, the covering of the women, the not eating of the pork. It's all in the Bible. And trust me, many Christians do not know about this. There's so many things, subhanAllah. And, um, you know, um, so many verses, so many verses. And there's so many contradicting different things. And you're just wondering, how did they change this? So, the fired up girl who had it all to say to her dad to bring him back to Christianity because where I grew up, Christianity was the religion. All I knew was, I didn't even tell you about the kiddish fights that we used to have. Trust me, we used to, to, to rhyme those songs, mimicking or mocking Islam and the prophet himself and the Muslims. And then the other ones could also sing against uh, Christianity, the Muslim kids. You know, we had those kiddish fights. Or saying, oh, Jesus uh, stole the, the timber and they crucified him, they hanged him, you know. So we had those wrongles, the kids' wrongles. So that really just made me hate Islam with passion because I grew up knowing by default Islam was wrong. Trust me, you can never know what Islam is if you don't get a chance of someone telling you what Islam truly is. Because there's so many misconceptions about Islam. There's so many things out there that I talked about Islam. I'm just like, damn. I just don't want to hear anything about Islam. Because by default, Islam is wrong out there. By the way they interpret it. By the way they spread the misconceptions about Islam. But when I sat with my dad and he got me into the Bible and gave me the verses, I looked no farther. He also told me about, because I told you that my dad just reverted to Islam. He told me, because I asked him, how did you revert to Islam? Who told you? Who sat you down? Who you sat me down and told me about this beautiful day? And he was like, nobody. He just did it by himself. How? You know, in the churches, it's all about the New Testament. Well, the Old Testament is almost thrown out that they literally don't read it. They just pick out random verses out from the Old Testament, verses that don't trigger people's minds, verses that don't tickle people's minds, just random verses, and then the rest is the New Testament. But he told me, whereas he was a born again, he was a born again as well, he concentrated on the Old Testament. He was just wondering, the Old Testament is a big book as well, but why... Don't we read it? Why isn't it so much considered? And yet it's also God's word. So he just decided to concentrate on the Old Testament. He read the Old Testament 
and the Old Testament is Islam. He told me he started practicing what the Old Testament says, removing the shoes. When he got to the church, he could remove the shoes. He carried his mat and he could sit down. He carried his water in the jerrican, small jerrican, and he could wash his, you know, some parts of his before entering because the old testament says you should clean yourself with water before entering god's house and that's what exactly that he did and so when he did all that the other members of the church were like mm, what is he doing they were just curious and the heads of the church were concerned and they even at one time considered chasing him out of the church because they felt like, like he, was he was going to mislead other people their ship you know per se that's what i should say so he said when he looked into whatever that he was doing it was islam but he never liked islam he wasn't a muslim that's what he said he didn't like anything got to do with islam how the hell is it that whatever that, that he's doing drives him to islam so he said he solely prayed to God direct and said, God, you see how I am yearning for you, how I am urging to worship you. Please show me the right path because I want to worship you in the right manner possible. He said he got a dream and two men came in his dream wearing sobs, candles, and the Islamic hats, and they handed him a jerrican of water and instructed him how to get wudu. The same way that Muslims do. Of course, the men were Muslims, but the way they dressed, they were dressed. And then he saw lots of Muslim people worn in white. And then after getting wudu, the men took him to the mosque. He said that was the beginning of it all. He never looked back. He never consulted anyone about his dream. He just knew that was directly from God. And he said the Shahada and he began from there. Subhanallah. That was his story to revert to Islam. So my dear ones, please allow me to end there for today. I just want to deliver these stories in bits so that we don't get exhausted. We don't get that tired. Before you know, you'll be just like, I'm not going to click on those on Ashura's videos because the videos are way so long and I, they're so exhausting. So please, we just began from when I was a kid, a little kid, how I got to know that I was human living on earth in my grandmom's hands. And then to the stage that I said the Shahada that I reverted to Islam at the age of 13 years because my dad had brought me to begin high school. That was S1 at his home. That's not just enough. I still have a lot to tell about how things went. Because it wasn't just a snap of a finger. It wasn't just a crunch of a snack. Because someone might be like, oh, oh, she reverted to Islam. That was it all. Subhanallah. The coming story is the longest in the toughest may Allah accept and put me in position to tell it all subhanallah because I'm here to inspire to touch lives may Allah use me may I be a way through that people will praise Allah that's my goal for me. and they'll be like if Ashura made it to wherever she is of course I'm not you know I haven't made it to the top but at least I'm not where I used to be. That's a fact that I cannot deny. And Allah told us, please, when I do something good for you, you can tell it out to people to know how great I am. Anyways, so my dear ones, yes, I'm here to tell my stories. That is alongside the other programs. I told you we do have the relationship vibes. That's about relationship. We do have Dean time with Ashura. That is strictly Dean. We do have the tours and travel. I'll be traveling with you. Thank you so much for being around. Thank you so much for joining this family. That's for those who have just subscribed. Remember, for the next episode, yes, I'm going to be delivering these stories in, in episodes, but I want to make them short, not that long to get exhausting. So the next time I show up here telling my stories, it's going to be how it was like me after seeing the Shahada. Remember, I was a girl entering 
adolescence i still needed a life i you know i just wanted this and that the clubbing and all that i was so into the music i wasn't into anything got to do with the veiling uh -uh. yes i knew i was a muslim by heart and i said the shahada but anything got to do with the dressing and all that but i prayed five times a day but the dressing and all that i believed in my heart that my heart is what god looks at and not rather how i dress but that just wasn't enough so watch out for my coming episode may allah accept and pour barak in everything i do love you all for the sake of allah i told you it's a long story if it if it way to be acted in series it could have season one season two season three season four who knows baby season 12 season subhanallah my story is such a long one and such a touching one and so inspirational please endeavor to check it out check the next what happened next and next and next i do love you over the sake of allah i like keep loving you all in a special way just keep glued also still coming your way assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi barakatuh please don't forget to like comments and share my videos this is the way to keep me in action Ciao for now. Golden Arch TV. Live your dreams.